Geralt, so content to see you. Le Papillon, Troubadour, remember? Hey there. I've never found the opportune moment. You see, I never had the chance, in fact, to say I'm a devoted fan. Hm. Thanks. Of Master Dandelion. I know the bards, every ballad in this cycle about the Witcher. Oh, I cannot believe my luck. Need something from me? Indeed. A matter most magnificent. My coiffeur, Jean-Louis Lotovic, has gone missing. Now, you shall rescue him while I compose an epic ballad about it. Listen, fair folk, to a glorious tale of a missing friseur and a witterhood prevail. What happened exactly? Claim the hairdresser's missing, but are you sure? Yes, yes. I've no doubt something's transpired. Something terrible, absurd. Jean-Louis is never late to work. He's punctual to a fault. I'm certain he'd be honored if I am the one to sing of his dramatic rescue. Who's gonna pay me to find this barber? I will. Such opportunities come knocking rarely. But you must take me with you, for I must transcribe all that occurs as it happens. Fine, but unusual as contracts go, it'll cost you more. Naturally. To be expected. Yes, by all means. As you wish. Fine, see what I can learn. Now, if you have to come with me, just one request. Stay out of the way. Mine and my swords. Of course. You shan't even notice me. Jean-Louis Studio is just there. Right here. Ah! What's the matter? I've hit upon the perfect ending. And all for the glory of her grace. The Duchess. I thought this was about a witcher and a coiffure. What's the Duchess got to do with it? Her grace can be as fickle as the cult she rides. Today, all remember my fine couplets of the tawny. Yet tomorrow, her illustriousness bought by her breakfast might demand a new epic poem. One must grab at opportunity before it flits away. Well then, where shall we start? At the door, by breaking it down. Let's go inside. Hmm. Scissors are completely dull. No way you could use these to cut hair. Empty pomade jar. <laughs> strong floral fragrance. <coughs> uh, very strong. That's Jean-Louis special floral elixir. A recipe is a jealously guarded secret. Hmm. This jar is empty. Looks like he ran out. The papillon, you lucky scoundrel. Locks untouched. No attempt at forced entry. Plenty for ballots all around, they said. This jar is empty too. There for the taking, but I never believed it. The coiffer's log. A manicure, curling, Cintrian pendulum, Rivian ponytail, raftsman's dew. Long out of style in Novigrad. 
Uh, his appointments. Last one was a certain Lady La Pompadou. Know her? Yes, a dear old bird. Jean Louis done her hair for a decade. Completely harmless. Sketch here. Looks like a map. This mean anything to you? Hmm. I may understand where it points, but if so, there's not there. Just fields and meadows. Think I understand. As do I. Perhaps. Around he looked, yet all was quite proper. I see raises, pomades, but no blasted hair chopper. Mind being quiet for a minute? Think I might know what happened to the hairdresser. No evidence of a break-in, no signs of a struggle. To my mind, he just went out to find ingredients for his pomade. Looks like he ran out. Of pomade. Yes, indeed. He'd have gone into the meadows beyond the city to gather flower petals for it. Trolls must have devoured him. Or a cyclops. Splendid either way. Think you could find the place using his map? Naturally. Lead the way there. Shaley got shone in its eyes, your glow. Sent marking times like a daisy could flow. They ventured beyond walls by vines entwined. Into the unknown, God the poor barber to, to find. Gonna do that the whole way. Bidding them farewell, the gravestones must covered. They strode briskly on by doubts unencumbered. <sighs> Behold! The location from the map! Damn it! Get back! What beast was that? An Arcaspor. Might there be more nearby? Who knows? And your sharpened senses, what do they say? That you'd rather turn and run. Oh, <laughs> a primo jest. Let us continue onward. I know you'll stand in my defense. You will, will you not? On to the second point on the map. The witch's blade flashed, juices spouted and poured, covering all about in an Arcaspor's gore. No piece of the stylist fell from its pals. The frisser had been nabbed by aught else most foul. There! Jean-Louis Pasquet! I'd recognize it anywhere. He was here. We can be certain now. A basket of flower petals. Same smell as the pomade. Grass is trampled. Multiple sets of footprints. A little blood. Seems you were right. He ran into trouble. Phew! What luck! I just hope it's not Cyclopes. Hard pressed to find a rhyme for that. So? On his trail yet, are you? made of rock. Trails gone cold. Wandered deeper into the cave. My, a dark so dark as to brought one to fear. Fear uninspiring. No rhymes at the ready. No damsel will manage to resist. Bolo balls! Hands down, I would have won the war. And had none of them. Pure poppycock, you beard mangler! The latest rage in some bomb botched Kovir. We're in Nilfgaard, you bong munch! What did he do to you? What did he do? He quaffed me, gave me a duck's ass, an ape 
scrape, a beaver bottle. I don't even know. So ashamed I couldn't attend the tourney. I'd have proved my valor. Mama said Vivian that have my prize. Then this scallywag with his talk of the rage missed my chance by the hair on my head. Got him back good from what I can see. That is what they start. I've not yet decided if I should snip off something more. Doesn't seem terribly chivalrous. What about honor? Your oath on the peacock, all that. I do vow on the noble bird I shall gut you if you do not skedaddle. Honor! Stand and fight! I challenge thee, and you boys dare not intervene. By golly, by gum, this will be chivalrous. Listen, children, a story you shall hear of a witcher who walloped a wrong night steady hair. I'll spoon up your entails, and you'll descend to the hot hand in hell. Remember, you must win. Already written the ending! Pathetic. Oh. Never fear! I'm knocking it all down! It's grown rather late. I believe we'll be on our way. Le Papillon, Le Beholder's wounds. You saved me at the last second. You're welcome. Jean-Louis Ludovic, I presume. Let's get out of here before he... Quiet! Both of you! I've got it! They froze in their fear, the knight's henchmen and squires. While his bowel set loose, heaven would spiral. The witcher cleft him in two lacerated. His neck swing the swine adroitly castrated. With one more caress from the witcher's blade, the night's guts popped out, his breakfast betrayed. Then he hobbled a pace on his stump palms like crutches, all for the glory of her grace, the Duchess. <coughs> I think you got confused. Sure you saw all that? Forgive me, Witcher, but poetry's hardly your forte. In fact, you know squat. To taste audiences demands high drama, and I provide it. What about my pay? I've decided you should receive a reasonable share of the royalties. Payable, let us say, semi-annually? Meaning you're broke just now. <clears throat> I owe you a thousand thanks, Master Witcher. I, I'll i gladly pay your reward. Not to mention trimming you when you see the need and come by. Mm, thanks. Take care now. Sacre bleu. It's a crime. <laughs> You're from the north. That's painfully clear. Excuse me? There is no excuse. There is but the need to outfit you anew. My salon stands open. Please come in. All jests aside, let me see what you got in your wardrobe. I'm more than willing, sir.
in the mood for a round of Gwent?
Keep calm. Start no pros. Don't crowd around. Reginald Aubrey has returned. Not to be missed. Buy your tickets now. Oh. Long live Duchess Anna huh? Henrietta. <sighs> surprise me. such a sense of style. My, my, Geralt. Not bad at all. And you've even a mask. Just not the kind required. Huh? They're a little different, the ones Mandragora members wear. I've brought you one. Put it on. Any idea why they wear masks? Likely, because they imagine it oh so very romantic and mysterious. The truth is far simpler. This way, no one can tell which drunken aristocrats are pinching the performers. Let's go. Soiree's started. Mm-hmm. Wise of you to hide your weapons. They'd not have let us in otherwise, that's certain. How do we find the Sintrian? Have you a plan? Key is not to spook him. Need to ask after his partner, Cecilia, first. Less likely to raise suspicions. As soon as we find her, we find him. Especially since he might be expecting us. What do you mean? Ran into some of his thugs in town. Knew who I was. Had it in for me. Right. Right you are. We must proceed with caution. Come, it's our turn. Madame, Monsieur, an extraordinary pleasure to welcome you to the Mandragora Soiree. Tonight, I particularly recommend you direct your attention to the performances prepared by artists of our community. Tell us about these performances. This evening, the Mandragora has the honor to present three superb displays of artistry. The first was a concert by Cecilia Belont, a singer whose voice, were it stone, would surely be a diamond. Sadly, Mademoiselle Cecilia has sung. Shame. We would have loved to hear her. Uh, luckily, you are in time to see the great Calesti, a master of visual illusions, come to us from far off a fear. Visual illusions. Interesting. And the third artist? Uh, the third and fourth, for they are a duo, are the Tuven brothers, presenting their newest pantomime. We were really hoping to meet Cecilia Ballant. You are admirers, I surmise. I'm certain you will have ample opportunity to converse with her. It cannot be easy to identify anyone in this crowd. Perhaps you could help us find her. Hmm, I don't know where she is now, but I can give you a clue. Let's hear it. Seek the Kaviri Orchid. Meaning? 
Cecilia wears one in her hair. You shall recognize her easily by the orchid. Well, well. Dandelion's always complaining about artists being poor as temple mice. The residence belongs to none of them. They are guests here. Oriana, she owns this. Woman in the black dress. There, on the balcony. Got her. Doesn't wear a mask? It would be pointless. All would know her anyway. Kuviri Orchid. Let's look for it. If we find Cecilia, we'll find the Cintrian. Resistance. I can't. I'm sure you understand. Look at the mage. I believe he's casting spells. Yeah, we'll see. The man is a true artist. Impressive. Oh, 
out the dust from a surfeit of beauty. Look, lanterns. They say releasing them brings good luck. Fine. Let's give it a try. I never suspected you believed in such things. Say something. <sighs> mm -hmm. Do not disturb. Shoo, shoo. Mm -hmm. It's the right flower. Of course it is. A Koviri orchid lends just the right contrast to her complexion. Need to talk to your model. It'll only take a minute. To me? Lie still! You may speak, but for love's sake, do not move. Wow. Impressive portrait. I know the style, the stroke. This is Dorian Villes. The gracious lady has heard of me? I... I've heard... Anna Henrietta herself wished you to paint her portrait once. Ah, at one point, the palace chamberlain even wrote to me, but, alas, ultimately refused my terms. What was the matter? When he learned I only ever paint nudes, he suffered all contact. He said he would not dare offend her illustrious highness with such a proposition. I've always longed to paint her. Such a shame. I think... you may still get your chance. We came here to meet you, specifically. To meet me? But... why? Centrian Noble you came here with. Wanted to ask you about him. Centrian Noble? Ah! You must think I'm Cecilia. Orchid uh, confused me. I told you not to move! As she concluded her performance, Cecilia tossed the flower into the crowd. I caught it. But I did see the nobleman. Really like to talk to him. What did he look like? Like many here. Tall, dark, masked. Know where he might be now? He gave Cecilia a small gift. A heart-shaped box. Then they strolled off together towards the refreshment tables. Excuse me, madame, monsieur, I cannot work like this. You must leave now. Someone left their loot behind. It looks a little like dandelions. This was scratched. Someone will be at once. Empty heart-shaped box. Cecilia must have left it behind. It looks like it held a flask of perfume. A gift from the Cynthrian, I imagine. Scent still hangs in the air. Let's follow it. It is a to the ultimate meaning. What if he doesn't come? He'll definitely come. Don't worry. How can you be so sure? Rather dearest. Try. As I said, only Mandragora artists allowed. Nothing I can do. Come. We must consider what to do. I... I'd recognize that voice anywhere. You... you must be mistaking me for someone else. I served 15 years in the palace. Your Grace, I'd not mistake you for anyone. Shh! Not so loud. We are here incognito, on state business. Yes, Your Grace. How may I serve? I hope we can count on your discretion. Of course. 
I shall be silent as the grave. Looking for Cecilia Belland, seen her? She's in her dressing room, where she went with a nobleman. They clearly were drawn to each other. What did the man look like? Tall, broad-shouldered, a black beard peeping out from under his mask, and he spoke with a foreign accent, a drawl of sorts. That must be him. We must get to the dressing room, quickly. Yes, Your Grace. I'll take you. No, stay here. Anyone tries to flee, you stop them. Understood. Quickly, upstairs. Cecilia. No pulse. We're too late. He... He slit her throat. The brute. Mm. Didn't go out the door. Guard would have noticed. Might still be somewhere here. You must find him before he harms another. I shall alert Oriana. At once. She should bring her soiree to a close. Shouldn't split up. Get up, I will be fine. Go after that rogue. I shall fetch help. Hmm. Killed her, then went out on the balcony. of a snap chain. Jewel must have been on it. Precious stone. Bloody fingerprint on it. Thief came for this. Must have. Tiny chain links next to it. From a snapped necklace? Seems there was a struggle. Jewelry box. Locks busted. Picked open, probably. It seems. Centrion tried to steal it, but someone got in his way. They fought, struggled, that's clear. Ended with one of them flying out the window. Fall had to have killed them. 
Jewel's still here, though, so our Sintrian must have been the flyer. So, this is the tracker. A witcher, yes? Indeed, this is him. We found the body together. Then he set off in pursuit of the killer. And ended up here, but I've only found evidence of a fight. Seems the Centrians killed his last, finally failed this time. Shame it happened too late for Cecilia. Poor girl. Always told her she chose her males badly. But I would never have suspected she could arrive with a murderer. I'll alert the staff. Have them see to her body at once. Meanwhile, we should sit. I will tell you everything in full detail. I caught him red-handed, attempting to burgle, rifling through my possessions. What did you do? Summon the guards? Oh, there was no time. I feared he'd escape, refused to give him the chance. He stood with his back to me, so I attacked. He struck his head on a picture frame as we struggled. He was bleeding, dazed, and then he drew a knife. Everything happened very quickly then. I knocked the weapon out of his hand and pushed him hard. He... Fell out of the window. Just so. None too wise picking a fight with an armed robber. Why? Because I'm a woman, in a frock rather than plate. I can take care of myself, I assure you. A hairpin might look like mere ornament, but plunged into an eye, it can be as effective as a blade. Claim the man was trying to rob you when you walked into the room? Yes. He stood over my dressing table, pouring through my jewelry. Mm-hmm. After this is my guess. Picked it up while searching. Why, that's the heart of Toussaint. Oriana, how did you ever come to have it? I bought it, many years ago, from a young woman. Jewel seems important. Why? The heart is an heirloom. It belonged to my family for years. Then it disappeared. I didn't think we would ever recover it. Seems someone is very determined to find it. The thief left his tool bag behind. Found this drawing inside it. Look. The heart of Toussaint. Representation's pretty faithful. Centrian must have been on a job. Got very clear instructions what to look for. So... So it is not him we seek, but his employer. Is this the only evidence we found? Also happened on the weapon he attacked Oriana with. Hunting knife. Used to skin game. Got an emblem on its hilt. This crest is used by the Lords of Duntine. The present master of the castle is a passionate hunter. Our next lead, perhaps. Duntine. Remember the place. Abandoned ruin just a few years ago. More recently, the family's last heir. Roderick returned to his ancestral seat and restored the castle. Know any more about this Roderick? His grandfather was an advisor to Queen Ademarta. The family received those lands as a grant for his service. Roderick is quite the recluse. He avoids society, preferring the company of a small team of knights. Though the latter term is imprecise, as they seem more akin to vandals with crests on their shields. Oriana. Everything we discussed here, hope you'll keep it to yourself. Counting on it, in fact. Word gets out he, uh, failed in his attempt to steal the jewel. His employer could run. We need to proceed cautiously. Discretion is in the interest of us all. I'll not ask what this is about, just as I expect not to be troubled about it again. By anyone. <clears throat> Forgive me, Madam Oriana, but might I have a word? You must excuse me a moment. Oriana, any 
thoughts. Few make me feel awkward, but in her presence, I sense anxiety, discomfort. The drawing. It's on the same type of paper the victims' names were written on. Drawn with the same ink, too. Seems the work of our blackmailers. Who were not only behind the beast's murders, but also stole the Son Real and sought to steal the heart of Toussaint. Look, the wine, the jewel, both tied to you intrinsically. Coincidence? Not something I'm willing to believe. Worried about one thing. That somewhere at the end of this scheme, plan might call for an attempt on your life. It... it could be something else altogether. My sister, Siana, might be among the schemers. She left court when we were children. My parents banished her from the duchy. I've not seen her since. What did your sister do to get banished? Siana was... cursed. Parents run afoul of some mage? No. She was born at an inopportune moment. They said she was touched by the curse of the Black Sun. Geralt, is it true? Can an individual be evil because they were born during the wrong lunar phase? Could be the case. Could also be because they were treated like lepers from birth. Isolated, prodded, ostracized. Couldn't have had it easy, Siana. She... She was angry at the whole world. She felt inferior, felt pain, though she masked this with confidence, arrogance even. She could also be cruel at times. I recall one such situation. She persuaded Cedric the Coolbert that she could see the future in her dreams. We were children, and Cedric's brother was smitten with me. It was an innocent childhood crush. Siana knew of it. She told Cedric of a dream she had had that he would die at the hands of his own brother. Cedric stole his father's sword and killed his brother. She destroyed two lives with a prank. Cedric mourns to this day. In the end, they forced her to leave the palace. A decade passed, more. I've missed her terribly since. Think your sister might be involved? Why? You see, I recall her always being rather possessive, throwing jealous fits if I had something she didn't. Here, yeah, that's normal for sisters. Rivalry. True. I suppose I gave as good as I got. There are times I miss that very much. The wine, its theft was the first clue. That's very much like her. She always did enjoy stealing my toys, but I grew almost certain when I saw the heart of Toussaint. Siana received it from father as a gift, at a time when my parents thought of her as but an ill-behaved little girl. Someone wanted some of my wine. The same someone ordered our family jewels stolen, or recovered. It's my sister. It must be. A fallen princess satisfying whims, going after lost luxuries? Hmm. Could be right. Your mission has gained new import. You must go to Dun Tyne, and if Siana is there, you must find her. No matter what she did, she is not to be harmed in any way, shape, or form. You must make sure of that. I'll find her if she's there. I hope you do. I very much wish to talk to her. Sister to sister. Your Grace, Geralt, I'd like to introduce... Regis! What a surprise! I had no idea you were in Beauclair. And this is... Uh, my very dear friend, Detlaf van der Eretane, an arrival from Nazaire. We are lending our combined resources to the Witch's Hunt. Ah, yes. Splendid. But why are you here at Oriana's? They came to pay me a surprise visit, so I invited Regis in for a glass of wine. We've known each other for... Ooh, 
ages, literally. Witcher, I hear you know Regis too, even that you are friends. Few I can rely on like I can on Regis. Kinda hoping he thinks the same of me. Curious. It seems opposites really do attract. Don't be fooled, dear. Geralt has many merits. He merely hides them from the world very diligently. Mm-hmm. You said you're both aiding him with his contract. It involves the Beast of Beauclair, I suspect. Master Witcher, maybe you could satisfy my curiosity. What's it like going toe-to-toe -to -toe with a monster, knowing you've only two options, to kill or be killed? Despite what you might have heard, I don't lunge at every monster I see, sword in hand. Talking gets the job done for some. Hmm. I wonder what a monster might have to say to you. It might want to apologize. My word. For what might a monster wish to apologize to a witcher? For killing. Though at times there is no choice, when loved ones are at risk and require protection. Same as humans. Put them in that situation, they'll kill too. You understand this. It must be why you and Regis are friends. If I understand you correctly, you would rather help a monster than kill it. If possible, yeah. Or at least try. Enough about the Witcher trade for now. Regis mentioned you come from Nazaire. I spent time there as a child. Fond memories? It was wonderful. I was positively entranced by the land's fashions. Deep-cut dresses I found most fascinating. I believe we're running short on wine. I should go to the cellar, bring another bottle. Let me go. Wanna help Regis? Know your wine a lot better than I know mine. We shall return forthwith. An exceptional conversation, don't you think? Vampires, a witcher, and the Duchess of Toussaint? My, my. Highly exceptional, Regis. Wanted to talk to you in private. You crazy bringing Detloff here? Geralt, uh, allow me to explain. No, let me explain. He's dangerous, and you are gonna watch him. But that is precisely what I'm doing. Detloff believes you'll succeed in your task, and he'll not need to kill anymore. That is, not until he gets his hands on the men who kidnapped his Renner. Oriana, she really your friend? Can she be trusted? Uh, I met her years ago, before I met you, and before she settled in Beauclair. We'd not seen one another in... Uh, oh, uh, I can't begin to tell you in how long. But I shall tell you all about her some other day. Guessing it's no accident you two stopped by. It would be quite some coincidence indeed. No, a dutiful little bird told us. Mm-hmm. Now listen close. Manage to learn where the blackmailers are. They're based at Duntine Castle. That's splendid news. If they are there, Renna must be there as well. Duchess expects we'll find her long-lost sister there too. Thing is, she might be involved. Could be behind the blackmailing. Do you mean to say your task now is to extract two women from the castle? Mean to say we can't breathe a word of this to Dedloff, who wants revenge above all else. Geralt, you must trust me. I've got a way with... No, Regis. Can't risk it. Gotta keep Dedloff here while I go to Duntine. Alone? Alone. That way I can make sure neither woman will come to any harm. I hope you know what you're doing. Fine. I shall see to Dedloff. Good luck, my friend. Splendidly, Detlef. Ah, oh, I'm grateful you brought back those memories. You're back. It took you long enough. Contrary to what common folk believe, choosing a wine is not nearly as easy as it might seem. Especially a wine to be served to two exquisite ladies. Regis, gallant as ever. I regret all the more that I shan't finish this second bottle with you. Duty calls. Your Grace, always a pleasure. I thank you for your help. It's been invaluable. Geralt, will you see me out?
You have exceptional friends. This Detlaf, an intriguing man to say the least. Don't know him too well. He say much about himself? Not much, but I've a good sense of the true nature of those I meet. I'd not survive a week at court otherwise. So what's his? Sensitive. Sad. He carries within him the weight of a terrible tragedy. He is a good man, but lost. Which is why he comes across as grim. Didn't expect the evening to end like this. Neither did I. But I have not drawn you out for a romantic stroll. I wish to make certain you know what you are to do. Mm-hmm. Gotta go to Dantine. I've decided my guardsmen will support you. You will meet them at Count de la Croix Mill. I know the place. Captain de la Tour and his men will await you there at midnight. You shall storm the castle together. on an empty stomach. Oh, Let's go! Nephew does not just fit. That Trump is the famed witcher. Whoa! Oh, witcher! Greetings! Kind of you to come. Matilda and I, we've a surprise for you. Hmm. You two seem to be getting along. We are. <laughs> There came a point we realized we had no grounds to quarrel. Things became altogether pleasant. And a bit spicy. Romantic. Quite. Got it. Needn't say more. Glad things are going well for you. What's the surprise? Some new monster I need to kill? No. Something far more pleasant. We've produced a wine. According to the best sommeliers, it might just dethrone Estes. We owe this success to you. So, if you'd agree... We'd like to name it after you. What shall we call it? Why not White Wolf? Wild, with character. It fits perfectly. If you wouldn't mind, we'd like to send a few bottles to your home every so often. I'd be honored. Thanks. No. We thank you. Take care, Witcher. Take it easy. Beast lurks in there. Right. Expected as much, cause I Shh quiet before you wake it. Come, I've camped nearby. We shall talk there. What do they call you? What's your crest? Speak. Geralt of Rivia, crest of the bridge, hail and well met. Francois Le Goff, I presume. 
Your betrothed sent me. See, you've been gone a while, so you've got her worried. I... well, indeed, for... for... Grotore is a most fearsome beast. I must prepare properly for battle. Takes two weeks, that? I have tarried a bit, true, but the delay is done. My word I gave, thus the beast shall die. Wouldn't happen to need any help, would you? I... I don't know. After all, I did swear a solemn oath to... Deposit the beast's head at your beloved's feet. No mention of you killing it all by yourself, though. All in all, uh, I suppose you're right. <sighs> we must fight side by side, then. For honor! We should turn back. If there's no beast, there's no beast. Damn shame, but we tried. Not so fast. Let's take a look around. Impressive. You'd think you were in a winter garden. The brute is not here. We cannot change this. We must live with it. Desist.
<laughs> By my troth, the damned brute was sturdy. I, I'm grateful, Witcher. You aided me greatly. Why the challenge? Couldn't have gone after something less formidable? A werebub, for instance? Uh, why? For... For the beast must match in ferocity the very ardor of my affection and... You're blushing, Sir Knight. Oh, it's my betrothed. The thing is, she champs at the pit to get married when we've not known one another but two years. So I vowed to slay Gratori. Thought it would buy me time to battle such a beast why it could take months. Mm -hmm. Especially at the rate you were going. High time you returned to Beauclair, brave knight. Nay, nay. The head of this beast is a trifle wholly inadequate to express the love I harbor for my betrothed. The world awaits. Uh, to honor her, I shall cut down another, more terrible beast. Take my advice. Grab the damned head and cut the shit. You are blind to my predicament. Once I return, I will have no recourse. She'll drag me to the nearest shrine, one. Shut up and listen. Crests, scrap metal armor, swooning damsels. All that's nothing to do with hunting monsters. Which is work. Damn hard, dangerous, and thankless work that you're just not cut out for. Wanna prove your valor? Go back to your betrothed and be honest. Tell her you're not ready to marry. You do not mince words, master. In Tucson, one might demand satisfaction upon trampled ground, for a lesser slight. Yet, there is truth in what you say, I cannot deny. I survived with my life by a hair. It is time... time I returned home. Got good news, madam. As do I. Francois has returned. We marry in a week's time. <laughs> Prenuptial teachings at the temple tomorrow. Dress fitting the next morn, then a tour of the wedding venue. I have never been so happy. Mm. Congratulations, I guess. Wish you happiness, both of you. And good fortune to you on your path. Your reward, Master. And Godspeed. <laughs>